Hi everyone and welcome to Tarkov Flea Market Analysis. This is going to be a weekly segment and more frequent what's uh, wipe occurs, which as you know, is on Thursday. We're going to run through some of the more important barter items available on the flea market and track their price fluctuations to show you how the market is operating right now. On top of that, I'm going to show you some of the most profitable crafting options available to you in the hideout and the most cost effective barters available at the traders. To do all that, I'm using Tarkov-Market.com a resource that I highly recommend for newer players or those who like to min-max their hideout and make millions. If there are specific types of items that you want to see me look into in the next video, let me know in the comment section below or if you're listening on Spotify, tweet at Tarkov Reporter on Twitter. You can access Tarkov Dash Market's features by supporting them on Patreon and that costs $5 US per month or $7 Canadian per month as you see on my screen because I live in Canada. I'll make sure all those links are in the description below. Let's start by taking a look at some of the more high profile items in Tarkov and their price fluctuations. Now, because this is the first flea market video I'm doing, I do want to show you some of the different features of Tarkov-Market.com. Um, so one of the things I make use of a lot is the favorites option in the flea market. You can favorite items that you look at a lot, for example, um, like if you're constantly looking up Bitcoin, as an example, you can uh, star this item. It'll show up in your favorites. Now, we're going to go through a bunch of these. We'll start with Bitcoin, though, because I know it's something it's highly contentious in the community. And here's a six-month price chart on Bitcoin in-game. Not real life, but in-game. Now, for most of this, it's going to map similarly to real life, but it clearly was disconnected on April 8th or 7th, somewhere in there. And that's where we saw a complete market crash. Now, if you're looking at this on YouTube, if you're, if you're seeing and listening to this on Spotify, you won't be able to see the price charts that I'm going to talk about coming up here. But from April the 8th to April the 26th, the price of Bitcoin dropped by nearly two thirds. Now it stabilized and leveled off and actually increased a little bit around 350, 360 in the coming month or so, but uh, we have noticed in the past week or so, another dramatic slide. And we're not quite sure where this one's gonna end. It's now down to under 250. The most recent price on the flea market, as of this recording, is 238K. I've seen it even lower. Now an item that's tied to Bitcoin is graphics cards. And you're going to see this price chart if you're watching this on YouTube. This price chart is very similar to the price chart of Bitcoin. The money is significantly different. For example, it reached the height of 1.8 million rubles on April the 8th before the market crashed. And the decline is very similar. Although there's no level off really in the way that Bitcoin did. It just continues to spiral downwards. The most recent lowest price, 450K rubles. One thing I want to show you about Tarkov-Market.com is their Bitcoin farm calculator. Now, if you're someone who likes the idea of passive income in this game, you can put in your hideout management level. You can put in how many GPUs you have. You can put in the price of fuel that you're using to run your generator, and it'll spit out the amount of hours it takes for you to produce one Bitcoin, as well as the profit per hour, minus by the fuel cost, of course, and profit per day, total profit per day minus fuel cost. You can add in here your trader progress, whether or not you have solar power, and it'll take all those things into account as well. So for someone who has, let's say, I would say this is probably an average, um, an average hideout, maybe 30 GPUs, hideout management somewhere in the 30s. This might be slightly above average. I'm not totally sure. We could get a, let me know in the, let me know in the comment section below where you are at in your hideout management skills and how many GPUs you have in your Bitcoin farm. So with this amount of GPUs and this level of hideout management, taking into account fuel from Jaeger only, 
157k metal fuel tanks. This produces a profit of 450k rubles per day at its current price. Now the price is falling, and this is the price as of we'll call it 6:15 p.m. Pacific time on Friday, May the 21st. So keep that in mind as the price may fluctuate over the weekend or in the coming week before I put out another video. One item I want to get into that is relevant to Bitcoin is the Tetris. Now, this wasn't affected by the precipitous fall of Bitcoin in game. As you can see, the fall off here happens on March 18th, a few weeks before Bitcoin would fall off in, real, uh, in, in the game. Now, this, with this change, which took the price of Tetris down from nearly 900k to under 90k, is a result of changes to the mechanic loyalty level to trade. It used to be one Tetris for one Bitcoin straight up. And so when Bitcoin was nearly 900K, so were Tetrises. But then BSG implemented a second aspect of the trade, a green battery. Following that, they decided they would add a second Tetris and a second green battery. Not stopping there, they implemented a global limit a very limited global limit to the amount of Bitcoins that were available to buy this trade. As a result, we see Tetris's at the lowest level we've ever seen. Another aspect of this I want to discuss is fuel. And it's required to run your hideout, as you know. Um, but something that happened earlier this year, you might remember, it's a bit of a fuel crisis. BSG reduced the spawns of fuel across the board, and as a result, fuel hit prices we'd never seen before. Expeditionary fuel tanks were six, uh, 400K. Metal fuel tanks were 640K. People were scrounging for items to trade for fuel, scrounging for items to craft fuel, whatever they could do to keep their hideout running, especially those who hadn't upgraded to solar power at that time. Now, the event only lasted two weeks, and fuel has pretty much settled in. Uh, metal fuel tanks, just over 200K. Expeditionary fuel tanks at about 150K. Barring any other, I would say, economy-changing events, I think that fuel will remain at these prices going forward. But BSG has been known to test things and to eliminate spawns of things or reduce the spawns. So I would keep an eye on this going forward as they will most likely try to test things for the rest of the wipe. Speaking of the rest of wipe, if you're someone who wants to max out your in-game skills, such as get max endurance or get max strength, Highly recommend the FP100 filter absorbers. Throw those into your hideout. It'll increase your gains. And if you look at this one month price chart, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening on Spotify, I'll try to describe it for you. The price increases significantly on the weekend for these items as a result of the player base obviously increasing on the weekends. So if you can get these items during the week when the price is dramatically lower, you'll be saving yourself a ton of money. What I like to do is buy one of these a day during the week, if I can, and then I run them on the weekends or when I'm playing during the week. That's a great segue into Targov-Market.com's hideout calculator, which is my favorite aspect of this website. Now, you can search the crafts by each of the specific hideout modules, and you can filter them by profit per hour or total profit. Top of that, you can take a look at each of the individual inputs. It'll even show you the fee and the fuel cost associated with the crafting process. For me, I constantly run the workbench, as well as a number of others that we'll get into shortly. The workbench is definitely the most profitable module in the hideout. I like to craft 7N31, SPP ammo, M61 ammo, 
and sometimes either M995 or BPMO. These are definitely the top five from a total profit standpoint. And furthermore, if you're using a lot of 7N31 on a day-to-day basis, you're saving yourself an astronomical amount of money by crafting it as opposed to buying it. SPP is, I found, a very consistent craft. The inputs, you can almost always get at these prices. M61 is also pretty consistent. I found that sometimes the M995 inputs, uh, such as the OFZ shell uh, or the green gun powder, can fluctuate a little bit more. Um, and BP is nice and consistent, although it doesn't give you sort of the high-end payout that the others do. Now, from a profit per hour standpoint, and this is something that I would use if I was playing the game, running a lot of raids in the day, uh, whereas a profit, total profit standpoint, is something I would use if I was going to work or going to bed. From a profit per hour standpoint, the red gunpowder craft is definitely the best, although it's only 35 minutes. So if you can't check this every 35 minutes, I don't necessarily recommend doing it. Uh, if you're someone who maybe wants to check it every couple of raids that you do, then this is great. Uh, either the green gunpowder or the VOG 25s, I highly recommend. These two are constantly up here. Um, as well, I would also say, uh, wires are somewhat frequently up here. Uh, they might not be right now, but, uh, I would say this is a usually up in the top five for my profit per hour crafts. Moving over to the med station. Now there's not a lot that's usually that profitable in the med station. SJ6s are almost always the top of the list. So I highly recommend running these a lot if you're looking for money. Uh, meds are pretty consistently a profitable item to run as well. But that's usually about it from the med station. Sometimes defibs pop up as profitable, but that's pretty rare. In the laboratory, you're not gonna make a ton of money, but there are some pretty consistent crafts that are useful for barters as well. For example, you can craft Cordura with four slings, and you can always get this price on slings, by the way, from the traders. You can craft Cordura, which you can then turn into slicks, uh, and if you also are crafting Aramid, and all you need is P.E.K.K.A., and, you, and again, you can always get this price from the, from the traders. So Aramid and Cordura, if you're someone who runs slicks a lot, highly recommend those two. If you're looking for money out of this, I would say Bleach and Shampoo, although, uh, the shampoo also, if you run ETGCs, the green stem, these are a great, uh, this is a great craft because you can trade three shampoos for one green stem for a great price. And that will save you a bunch of money. Moving to the nutrition unit, there is rarely anything in here that is profitable at all. The one thing I will say is that the Slickers bar are a good, a good craft to use, especially if you are on a quest that requires you to wear a scav vest. We all hate these quests, and scav vests are stupid expensive as a result of them. But what you can do is trade Slickers bars to Jaeger for scav vests. So I highly recommend, if you're on those quests, run this craft. You'll thank yourself later. Now in the booze generator, you're not making a ton of profit based off of this current price of moonshine. However, I've seen moonshine much higher in recent days, and I would want to get more info to see if moonshine is actually falling off or, you know, if, uh, if this is just a random price fluctuation that happened 14, 15 minutes ago. One thing I will say about the price of super water, though, is if you're crafting the super water in your water collector, you're actually only spending 67K or less on that super water. So let's take that price into account. If we go back to the booze generator, 
one of the tools here, and you can do this on anything in Tarkov-Market.com, is set the price. It'll update. And as you can see, this is all of a sudden very profitable, especially if you're using this to run scab cases. If we go back to Water Collector, I would turn that off for a second, get the actual price. One thing I've also noticed, I'm able to get water filters at a much cheaper price than this if you pay attention to it. So what I would do is sort of take a, take a look at water filters on the flea market, see when you can get them below 100K and buy a ton of them, especially if they drop down to near 90K, saving yourself a lot of money on super water. So you can then, of course, turn into moonshine, run that in scab cases, or just sell it at a profit. The Intelligence Center is unfortunately no longer a profitable place to craft anything. It was the case that you could make profit off of crafting graphics cards, but as you can see, it's not even the case that you save money by crafting them. You may as well just buy them off the flea market at the current price. It was also the case that you could make money off the valid key card. And in fact, if you're using the valid key card, you are saving yourself money off the flea market, but only 200K. And sorry, it's required that you put in 4.2 million rubles just to make this happen. So if you don't have a lot of capital right now in game, I don't recommend running your intelligence center at all. One final point I'll make on hideout calculations is that I'm using my own in-game progress for this, and you can input your own in-game progress for this as well. Uh, I'm using my own because I feel like I've made an average amount of progress this wipe. I feel like I've had an average amount of playtime. Um, I've reached an average amount of uh, goals for this wipe. So I feel like using my own progress is not a hindrance to this video, but uh, let me know in the comment section what your in-game progress is like. So maybe that'll help me develop future videos in the future. Moving on to barter calculations, and this is also a really interesting aspect of Tarkov-Market.com, is you can log in here and see all the different prices for all the different barters in the game and sort them by the trader, sort them by how much you're saving in the end. Um, now it's late wipe, so I'm not using a ton of barters right now, but a few of the things I am bartering for are cases. And one of my favorite things to barter for at the moment are weapon cases. They're super cheap, less than 700K right now as a result of phased array elements being as low price as they are. So definitely look into weapons cases. I find that they're actually a much better um, cost per slot than thick weapons cases. So keep that in mind. Couple other things that I like to barter for at this point in the wipe are slick plates, which are you can get for under 300k through this. And as I also as I mentioned earlier in the hideout calculation section, if you craft the Cordura and craft the Aramid, you are saving yourself also a ton of money. The trooper armors are cheap, and you can always find them on raiders and in ra in raid. They're really easy to come by. So this is a great trade i really recommend this trade another armor that i like to uh barter for is the hex grid now it's a little bit more expensive than the slick so you know it's not as great but maybe you uh already bought out all your slicks and you can't trade for them right now so go get yourself a hex grid i, I don't recommend doing this one as often because these prices are harder to get uh, for these inputs, especially with you have five of them for each. So this one's a little bit more difficult to get than the others. But I will say the X-Crit's pretty great, and for 300K, can't go wrong. Let me know in the comment section below if there are specific barters that you want me to look at or specific traders that you want me to look into at specific levels. I can always do that for you. Let me know, and come hit me up in stream as well at twitch.tv forward slash Tarkov Reporter, where I stream five days a week. You can find me there.
and you can always ask me and we'll try to pull this up for you. That's it for this edition of Tarkov Flea Market Analysis. We'll be back next week to keep you updated on everything related to the Tarkov economy. In the meantime, you can find me at Tarkov Reporter on all social networks and streaming five times a week at twitch.tv forward slash Tarkov Reporter. You can also find those links in the description below. Uh, before we go, though, one last reminder to check Tarkov-Market.com so you can min-max the Tarkov economy to the best of your abilities. Go get that money, baby. See you next time.